thank you for the presentation. And uh, uh, I will begin with my, 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 my theory and then uh, uh, my case study. Um, in my research, I, I built upon uh, a Tim Ingle's dwelling perspective in order to approach the idea of landscape, since it is, a, 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 I, I think, a, an excellent way to, to, as he said, to move beyond the sterile opposition between the naturalistic view of the landscape as a neutral external backdrop to human, to human activities and the culturalistic view that every landscape is a particular cognitive or symbolic ordering of space. So uh, within this uh, uh, dwelling perspective, I uh, use uh, particularly his idea of uh, Tascape um, and, and, and then his rec most recent works on, on landscape uh, in the sense that uh, landscape, it, it is not just uh, uh, the land that we look, but actually the land that uh, we shape or the cult cultures shape in, in their con constant uh, actions in the world. And particularly the, the idea of Tascape, I use it, uh, or oh, oh, first uh, for the youth that are not uh, familiar with the concept, uh, Tascape is, a, is an array of mutually responsive tasks in a pattern of activities related to dwelling. So Tascape is related to, to the actions that people carry on within their, uh, either their settlements or within the, uh, the landscape. And I use the idea of Tascape as an heuristic tool to create a concrete dialogue between the shape and content of archaeological record and the idea of landscape. So the idea of Tascape allows the integration of the archaeological evidence, uh, for example, the archaeological sites, to theoretical notions about movement, action, and knowledge of the terrain, of the terrain at different spatial scales that were essential to understand the indigenous landscape and uh, evaluate its, trans its transformation after 1492. Um, however, uh, I thought that uh, while the idea uh, of Tascape was very useful in order to create this uh, dialogue between archaeological, uh, the archaeological record and the, and the, and the abstract notions, it, it lacked uh, a sense of, of contestation, of conflict, that I was actually perceiving both in the archaeological record and the historical uh, or documentary uh, evidences uh, uh, of this particular region in the world. So for, in order to, 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 to deal with this uh, a challenge, I, I, I use Barbara Bender's ideas on contested landscapes uh, with the, the, with the uh, aim that, um, or with the um, hypothesis that the performance of daily tasks which form the basis of knowledge and cultural skills of an individual or of a community when carried out under uh, force of slavery should have changed both the perception, perception of those tasks in themselves and, the, and therefore their own perception of the landscape. So um, this is uh, my, my, my theoretical frame. And in order to take this uh, uh, and to, to operationalize these ideas, I, I first um, uh, uh, focus on, 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 on the notion of site which uh, in Caribbean archaeology is, is very, very important uh, definition and has had a lot of debate. And, uh, and then I didn't want it to perceive sites as a settlement, which is the, the traditional idea, but rather to see it as a place, and especially as a place of actions of, of people actioning in the world. So for this, I, I, I create a, a definition of sites as tendencies, where um, where uh, when recording evidences in the field, I uh, divided in a single cluster and scattered uh, finds um, in order to move from the general uh, tra or, or the traditional uh, representation of archaeological sites uh, in the terrain from something more dynamic that could actually provide more information on the different layers uh, of, of the actions or, or human actions in, in, in this terrain. And also in order to allow me to, to move from a, a multi scalar approach to a particular uh, elements on the terrain uh, to a regional um, uh, uh, definition. So with, uh, with the different uh, uh, material cultural and archaeological sites uh, I use, uh, I also um, use G uh, statistical analysis, special statistical analysis and GIS in order to test the relation of certain environmental variables to the archaeological uh, uh, pattern that I register at the end, which is what you see in this uh, lower in the, in, in the lower map. And, um, and I was able to, 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 to realize after the, the analysis that there were certain patterns and certain relations 
uh, between the archaeological sites and certain environmental variables that actually spoke about very specific uh, uh, tasks or, or, or very specific focus of, of the people or uh, that inhabited these sites. And for this, I create two, uh, what I'm calling ecological zones, that are related to different uh, activities, such as, for example, for the ecological zone number one, the relationship with mountainous areas, small-scale agriculture and endemic areas for Utia and Spalona Sonenodon, which is uh, which are these two animals. And, uh, and then the ecologic uh, zone number two, which is uh, more related to flooding uh, uh, valleys, related to large rivers and watershed, uh, areas of presence of salt pans and the uh, and endemic area of the manatee, which is the, uh, 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 as you perhaps know, uh, was the animal that inspired uh, the mermaids uh, myth. When Columbus, uh, it is said that when Columbus and his men arrived to the Caribbean, they saw this, uh, uh, the manatee, and they thought that there was a, a, a human actually living under the, under the water. And also, I uh, uh, did so, some statistical analysis in order to, to, to see patterns of material culture and how these mat different material cultures relate to all the archaeological sites. And, uh, and this is just an example to show you. But it was very interesting because I, I, uh, after the analysis, I was able to, to identify very specific uh, groups of material culture in, in very specific sites. And to give you an example, uh, such as this slide here, there were some kind of a, 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 a scrappers um, or, or, or flints, sorry, and with very specific bivalves that could indicate the, 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 the presence of a very specialized activities. So after, after all this analysis, I was able to uh, create three different scales of the task scape. Uh, the first one is what I call the task scape at the site level. Um, and, uh, Sorry. Well, I will read here. So the task scape at the site level. So this first level of the Nino's task scape has to do directly with daily activities and with decisions and actions at the level of particular communities in this in, in, in talking part in, in, in this uh, in the actions of these particular uh, places, such as places of exploitation of sea resources and places uh, places for habitation. And, uh, okay. Then the, there is the, the task scape at the level of uh, at the area level, which I call uh, 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 connected to trades and intercommunity interactions. So this task scape suggests uh, daily activities in the intercommunal level. And just to give you one example, one brief example of this, um, I was able to. For example, identify certain uh, 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 shell species that were located on exploitation of sea resources in one area or, or in one part of, of the research area, but uh, such as, for example, this here, and then the same shell species present in habitation sites in a completely different area, a completely different site on the other side of, of the research area, which could uh, 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 indicate. The, the presence the presence of either a change between different communities at the, uh, in, in, along the research area or the uh, traveling of these communities living on the north to the west in order to exploit resources on that particular area and finally uh, the task about the region region level which is uh, in my opinion has to do uh, more with political contestations and uh, this task, uh, I think, could have been based on the relationships and interactions between communities and the rights to occupy their land. So in these maps here, you can see the, 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 uh, the distribution of archaeological sites with particular ceramics, which in the, in the, in the Caribbean we have, we have associated with uh, different uh, manufacturer groups. Or, or, uh, uh, and, and as you can see, the Mayakoi ceramics is located all over the northern region and then the Chicoy is only located in, uh, towards the, the eastern or western uh, northern part of, of the area, but there is no Chicoy site on, on, the, on, the, on the research area that I work with. And in my opinion, is uh, perhaps, or I think that perhaps this can be uh, uh, related to either some sort of a stop or some sort of, 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 a, of, a, of a political differentiations in terms of ethnicity 
not necessarily in terms that, that there were two different ethnic groups, but in terms of, of politics or, or in, uh, at the communal level, or perhaps as well the, 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 the presence of different ethnic groups that were competing to, uh, uh, in or, uh, for these particular areas. So as a general view, the indigenous landscape uh, was very dynamic and diverse uh, before 1492, uh, where communities seems to have shared similar cultural features that are evident at small scale patterns along the region. However, at the large, at large scale, cultural patterns show differences between areas that might have resulted from ethnical uh, differences and or conflict relations. Now, after doing this archaeological research, I, co I compared it with the documentary data available for, for, for the island and for the Northern Caribbean in order to see if I was able to identify also this kind of a multi-scalar uh, stascapes for the Spanish people, uh, for the Spanish uh, 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 that arrived uh, early in the island or then conquered the island. And, uh, and in general terms, uh, what we see is that uh, there is a very clear pattern uh, for, uh, uh, that the that Spaniards uh, carry on and very clear task, which is connected primarily, of course, with exploitation of gold and a, a series of, of, of different forts that were uh, founded in between 1492 and 1508 along the island that, as you can see, go in a very linear way towards uh, from the northern part of the island towards the south and then just uh, certain specific points al along, the, al along the other areas in order to control. And, uh, and behind this pattern in what uh, the, the, the main uh, intentionalities is, of course, the exploitation of gold, but also the exploitation of human resources in, 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 in terms of slavery. And even when we take this into a broader uh, uh, perspective, uh, in, in the terms of uh, the routes that Columbus and, and the later explorers took uh, into the Caribbean, what we see is a clear pattern that uh, it, is, it has been uh, widely documented uh, that Columbus applied not from uh, his own uh, creation, but actually following the Portuguese strategy of factorias, which is a system that they use in Africa in order to exploit the, 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 the population uh, and enslave the population. So basically what they did, as, and also as you can Here is to build a, a, a fort on the coast at tal area and then go inland building new forts uh, that were located in various strategic places, either close to rivers or close to, to key indigenous sites in order to, of course, control the population and take access to, to people and, uh, and resources. So <clears throat> by comparing these two uh, uh, patterns from the indigenous to, 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 to the early colonial, I identified to, uh, that the transformation of the indigenous landscape happened at two, two levels. The first one, I, I call it a daily level, which has to do with this idea of contested taskscapes. So to give you some brief examples, the first one is that on the case of the gold, of gold, the indigenous population were forced to carry out an intense exploitation of a resource they already knew in places familiar to them and using their traditional skills, at least at the beginning of the colonization process. However, the intensity of the, in the recurrence of this task was radically changed, as well as the context of the work, since they are now being forced to do it and slaves to do it, to the point that indigenous people prefer suicide or abort uh, before continue work as slaves in the gold mines. So in, in, in theoretical terms, although the task of, 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 of exploding gold remained the same and its realization in the same places, the conflict on the constitutive acts uh, this is the task cape, radically changed. A, se a second example where we can see this uh, contestation is that during the beginning of the colonization process, the Spanish settlement organization did not need to develop a rural uh, area for producing food. Instead, the indigenous communities acted as the equivalent of it. So the, the indigenous agricultural task cape was maintained as with the gold, in their traditional forms until the population were finally displaced into Spanish villages. However, this task was essentially transformed by the tax uh, demands imposed by Columbus since his arrival. So um, if 
finally, uh, in, 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 at this level, I think that this idea of contested task can, can be divided into two levels as well. The physical, which is referred to the conflicts that are observed in, in the material and agents' relations on each place. Uh, and then the cognitive, uh, or cognitive, refer to the perceptions uh, of individuals and communities that dwell and move along these, uh, uh, or, or moved along those places. Then the second level uh, uh, I, I define is, uh, I name it level of the imaginary, uh, for the lack of still of a better uh, definition, and it has to do more with historical, homo well, historical homogeneous and archaeological diversities. So here, the representation that the first Spaniard created transfigured the landscape and the indigenous world for not only for the past population but also for future populations, whom develop having a distorted images of what really could have been the island of Haiti before 1492. So. Within this idea, uh, I, I, I highlight two points. The first one is the invisibilization of indigenous communities by creating uh, homogeneous territories. So here you see the, 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 the map of, uh, uh, created by a uh, uh, Jesuit uh, priest, uh, Charlevoix, uh, back in the 18th century. So the first Spanish tried to identify in the indigenous communities hierarchical and spatial patterns similar to those existing in Europe at the time in terms of uh, the terrain in, in terms of the terrain, this led, to the this led to the creation of indigenous territories that, based on the archaeological data, do not seem to reflect the cultural di diversity before 1492. Uh, at least not the cultural diversity that we are observing in, in regional uh, patterns in uh, true archaeological data. And the second point is the invisibilization of diversity of communities by creating homogeneous ethnicities. And in this point, the representation made by the first Spanish observers of the indigenous communities was marked by their own understanding and classification of the world. In their process of interpreting uh, the indigenous world, they, trans they transformed the diverse and multi-ethnic indigenous landscape to an homogeneous indigenous landscape formed by homogeneous ethnic group and homogeneous territories. And this distorted the landscape, uh, 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 sorry, and this distorted landscape was reaffirmed unsettled by 18th century and 19th century naturalists uh, and still later on by archaeological models in the 20th, in the 20th century. Thank you very much. <laughs>